Gedenkt die sechs Millionen Juden, was seinen umgekommen al Kiddush Hashem. Gedenk, was es hat getan mit deinem Volk der deutschen Nazi Amalek. Gedenk Treblinka. Gedenk Buchenwald. Gedenk Auschwitz. Gedenk Maidanek. Gedenk Sobi Bar. Gedenk die Gaskammerin und die Krematories. Gedenk die sechs Millionen. Wie viel seinen Schein ist das? Soll geheilig sein die Schau. Mir beweinen sie an rasch, jiskadal wie jiskadasch. Was verblieben ist uns mehr wie die durchgeglittert Herr? Auf dem Quarim, auf die Asch, jiskadal wie jiskadasch. But at the same time, in the ghetto, I was involved with the illegal youth organization, the social democratic youth organization called uh, Future, Zukunft. And we used to come together, illegal groups, having all kinds of lectures, listening to, even to music sometimes, uh, having a seminar, but these were small groups reading illegal literature. And this was in a way a little bit of an involvement, which my mother, although she was not too much anxious for us to do this kind of work, knowing that if it will be found out, then that. It was no school at that time in the ghetto. And we, the young people, started to be involved in teaching the children in the so-called, we call this the children corners, where children who were not able to go to school, the schools were closed, we used to take them together to teach them songs, to teach them how to write, and in a way giving them a, a little bit of life. And in the houses there, they were created house committees to help the starvation which started in the ghetto. In the ghetto, in the Warsaw Ghetto itself, over 2,000 house committees were created by the Jews themselves, the so-called self-help. An illegal Jewish cultural organization was created, and we, the young people, started to have seminars, I recall, that and later assigned to places to go after the curfew and to have lectures for the people of the houses, which were closed up. 
So I, a 16, 17 year old, went to such lecture and I recall it was on Pavia theory and I was talking about parrots, about von Schweig at this particular lecture and two young people, children were outside, the windows were covered in case a German will come and knock to have time that we will be able to disperse. And I slept over at that time in one of the apartments of the people. Uh, it's very difficult for me to say how the lecture, what they talked, but I still remember the atmosphere, the uplift, that in the ghetto was so much starvation and the typhoid epidemic which started and hunger and misery. We were talking about literature and a young girl was talking to older people and they were listening and somehow it was the thought, the hope that this will pass. It is a time that will not remain forever. And this kind of hope was constantly in the life of the ghetto. The Tree of Life presents in unflinching, precise, and often horrific detail the inner workings of the ghetto, the daily frustrations and humiliations of ghetto life. It chronicles the barbarous cruelty of the Nazis, the constant hunger of the inhabitants, barely relieved by concoctions made from turnips and potato peels. It chronicles torture, betrayal and degradation. But it also documents the tenderness of human love despite these conditions. It illuminates the complexities of relationships between husbands and wives, parents and children, lovers and friends. It documents the political life of the ghetto and it describes the cultural life of the ghetto. The establishment of a library in a two-room flat attendance at concerts and plays, meetings of the writers' group, political agitation and resistance. 18 kwietnia, w godzinach popołudniowych, dowiedzieliśmy się już na pewno, że od jutra rano zaczyna się akcja ostatnia wysiedleńcza z Gieta Warszawskiego. Po południu zwołano w lokalu komendy, zebranie. Na tym zebraniu byli wszyscy dowódcy region, obszarów, czyli był Geller, był Izrael Kanał, byłem ja, z komendy ścisłej był Anilewicz, był Berliński, byłem ja. Zapadła decyzja, że jutro, jeżeli Niemcy przyjdą do getta, zacznie się opór. Krótko trwała ta odprawa. Właściwie wszyscy byli bardzo spokojni. Jedyny trochę zdenerwowany był Geller, bo był w najtrudniejszej sytuacji, że tak powiem strategicznej, odcięty od dowództwa. Właściwie sam dowodził terenem bez łączności. Jak się skończyło to zebranie, wszyscy stanęli tak kołem i Anilewicz powiedział, no jak to będzie, kto z nas wyjdzie, kto zostanie. Każdy opowiada przecież o sobie, to ja też o sobie opowiem. Więc pokazałem palcem, ty wyjdziesz, ty zostaniesz, ty zginiesz, ty wyjdziesz, ty zostaniesz i tak dalej, i tak dalej. Niestety wszystko się potwierdziło, zostało tylko z tej całej grupy przy życiu dwie osoby. O 12 do 2.15 już Niemcy obstawili mury getta. Niemcy 
granatowa policja, szaulisi, estończycy. Co 25 metrów dookoła muru byli ludzie, stali z karabinami, wszyscy wycelowanymi w stronę getta. Niemcy przez te otwory, które były, wchodzili powoli po dwie, trzy osoby. Trwało to dosyć długo. No i rano zebrała się wielka kolumna niemiecka, ustawiona w plutony, bataliony i tak dalej. Przyjechały czołgi i gdzieś o, o siódmej rano z ulicy Miłej na Zamenhofa zaczęła wchodzić do getta. Tam były zabarykadowane nasze cztery grupy ich tam weszli, zostali niespodziewanie obrzuceni granatami, czołgi obrzucone butelkami zapalającymi. Odbyła się bitwa jak gdyby, tylko że nie wiedzieli Niemcy, gdzie jest wróg. I się rozpieszli. A myśmy byli na piętrze zamaskowani. I to jak gdyby było nasze pierwsze zwycięstwo. Musieli się wycofać. I wycofali się na parę godzin z getta. Dopiero później, około godziny dziesiątej, to już wiem, z tego co było później, objął dowództwo nad wojskami niemieckimi generał Strop. I jeszcze raz, ale teraz już inaczej zaczął wchodzić do getta. To już w szyku bojowym, skokami, pod murem, kryli się. Jeszcze utrzymywaliśmy te pozycje, które były, mieliśmy rano. Także przedarli się przez jedną ulicę, drugą ulicę i na trzeciej ulicy, gdy im się zdawało, że są już pewni, tam był podobny, znowu nowy, znaleźli nowy opór. Była barykada zrobiona z mebli, z beczek, z szyn żelaznych i na tej barykadzie właściwie skończył się ten dzień. Skończył się ten dzień walki, jak gdyby nasz zwycięski dzień. Niemcy niczego nie zdobyli, nikogo nie wywieźli, nikogo nie wyprowadzili i nie zdobyli terenu. A następnego dnia Niemcy od rana weszli na podwórko i zaczęli nas szukać. Byliśmy małą grupką, aparaty podsłuchowe nie działały tak dobrze, widocznie, nie usłyszeli nas, ale w pewnym momencie chyba bez tego, że wiedzieli co się dzieje, wysadzili część tego schronu w powietrze. I wtedy wszyscy wyszli i udało nam się przedrzeć przez to podwórko do dalszego domu i gdzieś na Franciszkańskiej 23 założyliśmy nową bazę. No była to technicznie można powiedzieć, oczywiście nie w tych wielkich pojęciach wojny technicznej, tylko w pojęciach takiej partyzantki miejskiej było to nasze zwycięstwo. Ale zwycięstwo polegało chyba tylko na tym, że nikogo żywego z nas Niemcy nie złapywali i nie wywieźli do obozu. As long as you got a gun in your hand. You feel we can resist, you can fight the enemy. We arrived in Getten Lodge on 1st of May 1940, living in German surroundings in a German city without a Polish underground, with terror from the biggest and strongest war machine existing there. We arrived in the ghetto, we didn't have any weapons. Up to my knowledge, probably was not one revolver in the ghetto lodge. When we started our resistance, With my knives, with my axes, we try to do something to have a fight and fight for it. But we have known that our mind resistance won't be a physical resistance. So our resistance become a moral resistance, a resistance to survive. A resistance to survive was to build up our mentality, to build up our moral strength, to know what we are fighting for a just cause. And our answer to Hitler is the survival of the Jewish people as many as possible.
Shalom Aleichem, Tayo Chaverim, and thank you for joining us tonight in commemorating the 78th anniversary of the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising. I'm Sam, and this is Rachel, and we are the current Fositors of SCIF in Melbourne. We are grateful to have the opportunity to once again commemorate together here in person, and we welcome our online guests from interstate and overseas who couldn't make it tonight. This time last year, the value of our collective commemoration was amplified as we all gathered around our TV screens in our respective homes to mark the 77th anniversary of the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising, a commemoration that reached over 2,200 viewers worldwide. This reach highlighted the continued universality of the messages of our April 19th commemoration, in which every year we retell the stories and testimonies of the courageous individuals in the Warsaw Ghetto who fought for the freedom of our people. As young people, we face the challenge of connecting to the Hoban in our commemoration, as we cherish the unique opportunity to connect with the testimonies of the last survivors, our living treasures. Shimon Dubnov's cry of Yidden schreibt und verschreibt, Jews write and record, holds the key to ensuring this chain of connection stays intact for generations to come. Through the testimonies of survivors and the recordings of those who perished, we can not only learn about the horrors they endured, but also understand their experiences through their eyes, their thoughts, and their feelings, helping us to achieve a true sense of collective remembrance. The feelings of fear that my Bubanina continues to experience to this day when she encounters Alsatian dogs, reminding her of her life-threatening journey of escaping the Nazis and their dogs by foot through the Ural Mountains or the feelings expressed by heroes like Bono Wiener, whose testimony we just heard, recalling his choice to stand up and resist against Nazi occupation in the Lodge Ghetto. To adequately honor the memories of those who resisted and those who survived, merely reading and listening will not suffice. It's imperative that we draw from these recordings the lessons they hold and use them to educate ourselves, turning these lessons into action whether that be by educating others, standing up for injustices, or calling out bigotry, is critical in upholding their true message. As a youth movement whose heroes are among the resistance fighters of the Warsaw Ghetto, we believe it is incumbent on us to not only teach about the tragedies of the Hoban, but relay the values demonstrated by these heroes to our Skifistan. Each year on Zume Lager, we hold Hoban Tog a day where we pause from the chaos and unbridled joy of camp to remember, reflect, and learn. On our most recent summer camp, we focused on the challenges of remembrance and recovery from immediately after the war until today. For many Holocaust survivors in our community, SCIF played an important part in their recovery following the atrocities of the Hulun. The first SCIF camp held in Poland after the war, on which my bubu was a helper, provided the recovering survivors with a renewed sense of community and for some, even the chance for long-awaited reunions with family members. Here in Melbourne, survivors established SCIF, transporting a piece of their pre-war lives and laying the foundation for the 71 years that have followed. Dem 19. April is geworden a Gelegenheit, zu der Monne nicht nur dem Walschewe Ghetto Eustand, nor euch die jüdische Carbones von Iber Europa. Der 19. April ist geworden eine Jahrzeit für alle die, welche haben nicht ihre eigene Quorum und mir der Mann nicht nur eine Nummer, nur individuelle Menschen, welche seinen der Mordet geworden. Kinder, Mames, Tates, Brüder, Schwester, Bobes, Seides. Jeder einer von der sechs Millionen. As part of tonight's commemoration, you will hear our Skifistan speak for those who never had the opportunity opportunity to tell their stories and sing for those whose voices were silenced. We heed the call of Shimon Dubnov, schreibt und verschreibt, testify and recall the atrocities that occurred as we continue the chain of remembrance as part of Die Goldene Kate. Covered Zeo on Denk.
Stellte sich, war was ist von uns geworden? Verstanden haben mir sie salz verloren. Nicht gehoffen unser Betten, also mit sich uns retten. Verlassen haben mir doch unser Seinen mir zu viel Befeulen hat der Haar zu bringen, jeden Funnar um und schissen neu Ponar. Puste seinen gewahren Stiebel, aber voll der Fahrt die Grippe, so in der Hotte kriegt sein größten Ziel. Oi, Ponar, jetzt seht mir. Die Wegen Sachen Hitlen durchgenetzt von Regen, das seinen Sachen von Carbones, von die Heiligen Schommes, die er dort sei heufebig zu Dies wie der Sonnig schön schmeckt prachtvoll als Arum und mir seinen verpeinigt der und leiden alle stumm. Abgeschnitten von der Welt mit eure Mäuren verstellt, a Strahl von Hoffnung der Weg The hundreds and thousands who arrived in Vilna were huddled together, terrified, hungry, and exhausted. Stooped, with a habit of bending over at the sound of every exploding bomb. Terrified of all that happens around them with such lightning speed, such terror and tragedy. A week ago, a landlord, a director of a bank, an industrialist, today, hungry, naked, and hunched up. 10 days ago, a merchant, a factory supervisor, a cobbler, a baker. Today, hungry, naked, barefoot, and crushed. The earth trembled at its foundations. Towns and villages were burning. Yesterday's factory manager begging along with their workers for a peasant's piece of bread. Hunger. Yesterday's landlords begging along with their tenants for a roof over their heads. Such was the reality of those days. And this is how they came to Vilna. Hunched up, terrified. What happened at the beginning? Thousands of people pushing baby carriages loaded with the remains of their possessions, walks in the direction of the streets, where they would be allowed to live. The wall came later. After all, the Jews themselves would have to build it. Dort, auf jener Seite, ist die Freiheit, setzt sie von der Weit durch die Trotten. Dort, auf jener Seite, der Freier negen. Dort läuft die Zeit, dort leben Menschen, Freie. Bruder, nimm mein Hand, 
Herreufeinen. Bruder, kai dein Bräut mit die Zähner, und ich gucke hin, mehrere Rieber. Ziehen Felder grün, dorten, lieber, Bruder, meiner. Vergess, Odem, vergess und kai dein Bissen. Trink dein Pein und fress. Und hast da Kischen? Leg dein schweren Kopf. Leg dein Mieden, holem dir in Schlaf, dort zu schmieden dir dein Freiheit. Smuggling began at the very moment that the Jewish area of residence was established. Its inhabitants were forced to live on 180 grams of bread a day, 220 grams of sugar a month, one kilo of jam, and one kilo of honey. It was calculated that the officially supplied rations did not cover even 10% of the normal requirements. If one had really wanted to restrict oneself to the official rations, then the entire population of the ghetto would have died of hunger in a very short time. Yidin, schreit und was schreit. My stomach doesn't think. It yells. It's enough to kill you. It demands. It provokes me. Why are you yelling like that? Because I want to. Because I, your stomach, am hungry. Do you realize that by now? Who is talking to you in this way? You are two people, Arke. It's a lie. Oppose. Don't be conceited. That kind of split was all right at one time when one was full. Then one could say, two people are battling within me. 
and one could make a dramatic martyred face. Yes, this kind of thing can be found quite often in literature. But today, don't talk nonsense. It's you and your stomach. It's your stomach and you. It's 90% your stomach and a little bit you. A small remnant, an insignificant remnant of the Arche who once was. Oi del nomen yid, es is doch by mil tael. Fal dem nomen yid, oi gein mein elai doch fael. Sis fal macht fal mir di teueren, val ich bin aid geboren. Aid, aid, fal dem nomen yid. Oi del nomen yid, es is doch by mir teuer. Fal dem nomen yid, oi gein. Sis fal macht fal mir di teueren, val ich bin aid geboren. Aid, aid, aid. Fal dem nomen id, fal dem nomen id. Jeden schreibt und verschreibt. Zu morgens, wenn ich komme ab von Gurner Schlanzke Gas in Keller rein, begegnet er mit der Bichel von Chemie in Hand. Er ist von Fach ein Ingenieur. Gerade ist in Stub keiner nicht da. Will ich, will ich dir etwas aufklären? ruft mich Michael. Er lehnt mir von dem leeren Bichel die Verbindung von Potash. Saut Säuer, Benzin im Kopf, plantieren sich chemische Formules durchgeflochten mit dem Gedank. Als Efscher kann von dem etwas herauskommen. Als man mischt zusammen die Oben der Monte Stoffen bekommt sich eine Flüssigkeit. Was kann bei einem starken Kreisel aufreißen und anheben brennen? Man darf probieren, das machen. Halt mich all in ein über Chaseren. On the night of April 19th, a phone call from the ghetto, a brush of bloom. The active resistance has erupted. He said, All the groups of the fighting organization are participating in a disciplined fashion in the struggle. For the time being, there were only a few casualties among our combatants. There were many more casualties among the Germans. A second phone call on the night of April 22nd. We had a tragedy today. Michael Klipfisch died fighting. We are short of ammunition. We need arms.
As close as we are to Warsaw, all the messages we get from there contradict one another. One thing is clear. The Warsaw Ghetto is still fighting. Poland fought for her independence in 19 days. The Warsaw Ghetto has already been carrying on its heroic struggle for six weeks now. Verschwind nicht die Nacht und der Tag kommt nicht an. A blutige Keul wird die Erde schäumen. A jed flattert auf wie ein stürmische Fang. A von in dem Tal von die Meissen. In Chowes das Ghetto, die jeden in Schlacht, der jed spreist durch Reuch und durch Flammen. Ne komme, ne komme, er stürmt die Nacht. Fa Kinder, fa Tates, fa Mames. Der Schnee schitt und schitt und die Erde wird nicht weiß. Es haut noch das Blut in ein Sieden. Es ruft noch ne Komme auf Schneeken Eis, das Blut von die heldische Jeden. Kein Tag wird nicht sein, ruft der Jed und kein Nacht. Mir wollen die Welt nicht vergeben. Die welche seinen gefallen in Schlacht, ewig in uns wollen leben. Mir wollen gedenken, dem Wei und dem Mut, es fibbert in Glie die Schamme. Kritz euch sich in Herzen, drei Werte von Blut, ne komme, ne komme, ne komme. What do you know? It's not only the ones who fought in the ghetto that were heroes. Those that joined their mother so she wouldn't have to go alone to her death are just as much heroes as those that died in the uprising. People dreamed up the idea that it was more beautiful to die with a gun in your hands. Es hat sich angehoben, die prächtige Epopeie von dem jüdischen bewaffneten Kampf in Polen. Die heldische Verteidigung von Warschauer Ghetto, der prächtige Kampf in Bialystok, die Vernichtung 
von den neuen Alter in Treblinke und Sobibor, die Kampen in Tone, Bänden und andere Punkten, jeden haben gewesen der Welt, als sei können kämpfen mit Gewehr in die Hand, als sei weißen wie zu sterben mit Wilde im Kampf, mit dem Tonfeind von jüdischen Volk und von der ganzen Menschheit. Und das ist alles, was wir haben euch gewollt sagen, teure Freund. Nicht kein Sach von uns seinen geblieben beim Leben. Von Schreibesleben schreiben und arbeiten mit uns. Sie sei Leben, weisen wir nicht. Sucht war sei durch einen internationalen Reutenkreis. Als Zettel von dem ausgehagerten Kultur aktiv legen wir bei. Sie müssen noch haben eine Gelegenheit, sich zu sehen mit euch, seinen mir in Sofek. Geht über unsere heiße Großen, alle jüdische Kulturtours, Schreibers, Journalisten, Musikers, Plastikers, alle Bäuers von der modernischen jüdischen Kultur und Kämpfers für nationale und allgemein menschliche Ausleistung. Jede schreibt und verschreibt! To those who may find this material, the materials gathered here, the Chronicle, along with all the documents, manuscripts and other texts, were collected, written and preserved in the most difficult days of my life, from 1941 to April 1943. I beg the honest discoverer to respect my wish, preserve the materials and carefully ship them to my friends or relatives. The time of horrors I leave for future worlds I write because I must write, a consolation in my time of horror. For future generations, I leave it as a trace. Jeden schreibt und verschreibt. Oh, 